Hey everybody, uh, back again for another video lesson, the next lesson in our Chapter 7 video series. Uh, we're at 7-7 seven, seven in our textbook, uh, and the content from this particular chapter is uh, Base E and Natural Logarithms. Base E and Natural Logarithms. So if you have your notebook handy, uh, take some notes along with me while I go through this. Um, if you um, are new uh, to these videos, uh, please feel free to pause, fast forward, rewind, skip around, watch a little bit, come back later. Use this video however is most effective for you. Um, I go through the material as quickly as I can uh, while at the same time explaining uh, as many of the steps as possible. Um, but some of you, it might go too fast so you can like I said pause rewind watch again um, for some of you brainiacs that it goes too slow um, you can fast forward uh, skip around to whatever you need okay so here we go we're gonna jump right in so base E and natural logarithms we need to talk for just a minute about uh, base E and what that is okay so natural logs are logs with a special base and that base is E Okay, E is called Euler's number. It's pronounced Euler, but this is how it's spelled. Okay, uh, it's pronounced Euler's number, and Euler's number E is an irrational constant. Okay, it's an irrational constant, just like pi. So what this means is E means the same thing in every level of mathematics every time you use it. Okay. Um, e, and if you look down at the bottom, it's an approximation. It's a non-terminating decimal, which means it goes on, for, goes on forever. Uh, 2.71828 are the first five digits after the decimal point. Um, but again, you treat E just like you treat pi. Uh, many of you know pi is 3.14 uh, and several decimals after that, non-repeating uh, decimals. So E is in that same classification. It's an irrational constant, means you cannot write it as a ratio. Okay, um, But E means the same thing always every single time you do it. It's a constant. It represents the number 2.71828 continuing on forever. Okay, And E shows up in many applications in the real world. You'll see in 7.8 when we start solving some problems, some word problems, that E shows up a lot. It shows up a lot in science. It shows up uh, some in finance uh, or financial math. Um, it's a very, very interesting concept. Okay, But for us, we just need to know the basics about uh, e and uh, natural logs, logs that have base E. Okay, so here's uh, our first example. Example one, rewrite each expression. Okay, so we see the first one is e to the x equals 25. And we know that we're going to rewrite this as a log function. So what you would have would do up to this point is you would say log base E of 25 equals x. But here's the catch with natural logs, or logs base E. Whenever you have E as the base, that's actually called a natural log. So we call this log base E a natural log. And we write it a little bit differently. Here's how we write a natural log. We use LN, LN for natural log. And you don't have to show that the base is E because the only time you use LN is when the base is E. This is really similar to the last section, 7.6, with common logs to where when you don't, when you see log without a base, you just automatically know that that value is, that base is 10. In the same way, when you see LN, that means there's only one base that that log can have. It's a super, super specific uh, example. The only base that you're allowed to have when you use LN is base E. Okay? So, the correct way of writing this as a log function would be ln25 equals x. Okay? All right, so if we saw something like this, uh, ln12 equals x, we could rewrite this as an exponential. Okay? Whenever you see ln, you need to train your brain to know and to remember that anytime you have ln, the base that you're going to be using is e. So it's going to be e to the x equals. 12. e to the x equals 12. Anytime you need to write a log with base e, you're going to use ln. And anytime you have a natural log and need to write it as an exponential, remember that the base you're using is e. Other than that, uh, the, the rules that we already learned in 7.4 and 7.5 about log equations and simplifying log properties 
are all the same. Just because it's natural log, none of the rules of logs change. Okay, so what that means is if we're going to condense this expression, we're going to rewrite it in one. Um, we're going to rewrite it as one natural log. Okay, you use the same property. So the first thing I see is this two slides back as the exponent of x. And I can also do another thing here at first. I won't do that yet. I'll split it up into a couple steps. And then we can take that one third and we can slide the one third back as the power of y. So the next thing I can do is I can apply the product property with the six and the x squared. So I'll have natural log of six x squared divided by y to the one third power. So I did the product property with the first two and then the quotient property with the second or the third one. Uh, so the hit, the trick that I've told students uh, in the past, and I'll tell you again here, is remember when you're condensing logs, any log that has a negative sign in front of it, need that log is going to end up being in the denominator when you condense it. Okay, anything that has a negative sign in front of it needs to be in the denominator when you condense into one log. So final answer: natural log of six x squared over y to the one third power when we condense that. So what I hope you saw here is that the properties of logs, the way you would have condensed this uh, that you learned in, la in the last section, the rules are the exact same. Nothing changes, nothing at all changes about the process when you have natural logs, log base e. Okay. Uh, so here's another problem. Solve for x. Okay. So we have 4e to the negative 2x plus 8 equals 86. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try to get e to the negative 2x all by itself. So first step, probably pretty self-explanatory to you. We're going to subtract 8 on both sides. So 86 minus 8 gives me 78. Okay. Then the next step is I'm going to divide both sides by 4. So I get e to the negative 2x. And I'm going to type that in my calculator really quickly. Uh, 78 divided by 4. Oh, forgot the division sign. It's important. Divided by 4. Let's see what we get. Maybe. Hello? Uh-oh. I messed it up. It's broken. Let's try that. Okay, there it is. Okay, sorry about that. Technical difficulties happens to the best of us. 19.5 is what we get. So we have e to the negative 2x equals 19.5. All right, from here, to solve for x, to get access to this x, which is located in the exponent, I need to write this as a log function. But remember, because we're using base e, we get to use that special log, the natural log, of 19.5 equals negative 2x. So then x is going to equal whatever the natural log of 19.5 is divided by negative 2. Now remember, the natural log of 19.5 represents a real number. It's a real number that actually has a value that you can calculate, especially if you have a calculator. So if you look on the left-hand column of your calculator, okay, if you don't have one in front of you, you can just look at the one that I'm showing you here. Yeah, natural log is right below log. So natural log, we're just going to type this in, 19.5, close your parentheses, and divide that by negative 2, press enter, and we get that x is approximately negative 1.485. In this class, uh, we round to three decimal places, so that's why I stopped at uh, five. Um, but uh, you could round to more or less if you choose, but I think what's best is three decimal places. So we get x is approximately negative 1.485. Okay? All right, let's try another problem. Okay, uh, solve for x here. We've got two uh, natural log of x plus two equals 20. So here we've got a log function that we're going to solve for x. So the first step here, you probably are intuitive enough to know, divide both sides by 2. So we get natural log of x plus 2 equals 10. Now to solve for uh, x, to get access to this part of a log function, we need to rewrite this 
as an exponential function. Okay, we need to rewrite it as an exponential. At this point, you can ear it. The reason it's called an ear is some people think when you draw that little loop, it looks like an ear. I've never in my life understood that or seen an ear. But every time I try to do it, I, I think maybe this is the time I'll actually see the ear. I don't know. Okay, so remember the trick here, you're, you're, you're not going to be able to get this if you don't remember what the base is, the special unique base that is the, the only base that you're allowed to use when you're doing uh, talking about natural log. Remember that it's base E. So we have e to the 10th power equals x plus 2. Now remember that e is a constant. It's an actual number that means the same thing every single time you use it. So if you take a number and raise it to the 10th power, e to the 10th is actually going to equal a real number. Okay. So if you wanted to solve for x, you're going to take whatever e to the 10th is, and you're going to subtract 2 to that. So then we're going to go back to our calculator, and you can actually do e to certain powers. If you look right above the natural log button on your calculator, there's an e to the x. You probably can't see, the, re the resolution probably isn't strong enough on this video to see that that actually says e to the x. But if you have a calculator in front of you, you're going to see that that is, in fact, e to the x. So I hit second, ln, and that gives me e with a blank exponent. I'm going to type in my 10. I'm going to hit the right arrow once so that I get down from the exponent, and I'm going to subtract 2, and I'm going to press enter. There is my solution. I get x is approximately 22,024.466 is where I would round that. Final answer. Again, please do not be deceived. Just because you have a big answer choice and it's got an ugly decimal, that does not mean you're doing anything wrong. And do not automatically assume that ugly decimals means that math is hard. It's not the case. You've, you've, beyond, you've moved beyond that point in your life. Just because you have ugly answers doesn't mean what you're doing is hard. This is a pretty easy problem if you go back and look. All right, let's try another one here. Uh, so we have uh, a inequality. Okay, solve for x in this particular inequality. So uh, this goes back. We can kind of put together some skills uh, from uh, previous lessons uh, on this. If you need more help with inequalities, uh, go back and look at 7.4 uh, log inequalities. Uh, you can also look at 7.6. There's some log inequalities that show up in 7.6. The video for 7.6 would be a good thing for you to check out. All right. So when I do this, I'm going to rewrite this as a exponential. Okay. So I'm going to leave the 1 minus x on the left-hand side, and I'm going to move the base. Now, remember, special case, when you have a natural log, every single time you have a natural log, the base you're going to use is e. So you're going to rewrite that as 1 minus x is less than e to the ninth. 1 minus x is less than e to the ninth. Okay, so uh, if we wanted to solve for x, I would add x to the other side and then subtract e to the ninth to the right hand or the left hand side. So if I isolate x, I rearrange everything, this is where I'm at. Okay, now please remember that e is a real number, it means the same thing every time you use it. So e to the ninth is also a real number that we can evaluate. So I have 1 minus e to the ninth. And I get negative 8,102.084 has to be less than x. Okay. Now there's one other thing that you have to remember when you're solving log or natural log inequalities, and that is a property of logs that tells us we have special rules on what you are allowed to take the log of. Okay, You are only allowed to take the log of numbers that are greater than zero. So what that means is the value of one minus x must always, always, always be greater than zero. Must always be greater than zero. So in other words, if I moved the, added the x to the other side, I would see that 1 has to be 
greater than x. 1 has to be greater than x. Okay? So since I see that these two inequality signs are pointing the opposite direction, I need to take these inequalities and combine them into one compound inequality because both this inequality and this inequality both must be true. Okay, there are two conditions that must be true for x. If I stopped here and used this, take for example uh, x equals 4. Is 4 greater than negative 8,102? The answer is yes, 4 is greater. But if I plugged a 4 in here, I would take 1 minus 4 and I would have negative 3. And you are not allowed to take the natural log of negative 3. Okay? So both of these inequalities must be true. You're picking numbers greater than negative 8,102.084, but the condition that they are less than 1 has to also be true. So if we put those two together, we get what's called a compound inequality, where you have x is less than 1, but greater than 8,102.084. It's a compound inequality. Again, I know it's compound because I look and see at the sign of the inequalities. They're pointing different directions with respect to x. So that means I'm going to have a compound inequality. Okay? All right, so that actually is everything that you need to know right now for 7-7, uh, seven, seven, uh, base E, and natural logs. Okay, uh, there are some more application problems that use E in word problems, real world application problems, and we will cover those in the next lesson, 7.8. So, hope this was helpful for you, uh, and we will see you next time. Bye bye.